So you'll have learned a lot about DNA and its structure. You'll have to draw different diagrams showing DNA structure, what a nucleotide is. And one of the important things that we have to understand is that this structure was actually figured out by these two fellows right here, Watson and Crick. Also, we have to understand the contribution of somebody else called Rosalind Franklin, who we'll mention here. In the higher level syllabus, you're going to see a little bit more attention is going to be given to uh, Rosalind Franklin's contributions. But what we wa really want to just emphasize here is the idea that models, like they built physical models here, and building physical models can help with figuring out different types of scientific discoveries. That's the point uh, that's trying to be made here, is that in the nature of science, there's all types of things that can help improve our understanding of the world, but making physical models is one way of helping to actually figure out how different pieces might be able to fit together. So they actually cut out cardboard pieces. They made steps in the middle that were of similar length. They figured out that the way these bases have to fit together, uh, you can't have a wide step, then a narrow step, then a wide step and a narrow step. So that's how they figured out that A binds with T and C binds with G. They used a bunch of different pieces to put everything together. They also had to figure out that the two strands run in opposite directions. So if you want, if you understand this term anti-parallel, or you also understand five prime to three prime directions, they found out that one strand had to be running kind of upside down next to the other one, parallel, but in opposite directions. It's called anti-parallel as well too. Uh, using the model, they were able to convince other people about the accuracy of the structure and further testing also confirmed this as well too but this was the real piece that helped them really confirm that the shape was what we call a helix or a double helix because of the two strands running and twisting around so you think of a ladder if you take a regular step ladder and you grab one end of it and if it's a rubber ladder and you twist the two ends in opposite directions they figured out from this diagram here through x-ray diffraction more on this later, but through x-ray diffraction from a discovery by Rosalind Franklin that uh, they were able to deduce the actual shape. So we call the shape of DNA a double helix. So one more time, discoveries in science can be done, can be made by advancements in technology, but sometimes good old model building, as Watson and Crick did, can help us to really figure out how things actually work when we're putting things in our hands and actually being able to visualize uh, how they actually, how the bonds actually fit together and how the atoms might interact with each other, okay?